the leading gel. Afternoon, Mr. Carrot. Trying to watch TV again? Trying, yes. Not very successfully, I'm afraid. I had it a minute ago. It's these hotel room TVs. Holly! Don't move! That's the perfect picture! Mr. Carrot, I have work to do. I had it then. I had it. It's the mop. It's the mop. How are you Jack, holding it? What are you doing? How are you You're holding it? You're a grown man. Now you have got to get out of this place. It's going to take me all afternoon to clean this room. Uh, I want to watch my TV show. And I show. want to do my job. Yes, you don't understand. It's me on TV. Oh, that's nice. Mm. But there are other TVs in LA. You go and find one of those to watch. But this is my hotel room. I want to watch my TV. Have a nice day. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that reception. It's, uh, it's greatly appreciated. Thank you. You're Thank you. very welcome. Oh. It's, a, it's a wonderful theatre, isn't it? Yeah, isn't it? It's like being inside a wedding cake. <laughs> <laughs> I, lo I love the balconies up here. Look, I, you look like the Muppets up there. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, I went to, I went, oh, yes, I worked at uh, Caesars in Lake Tahoe, which, uh, are you, are you familiar with that? Would you, yeah, yeah, all that, that, yeah, that gambling place, wow, I mean, wow, we have an, an expression in England, gobsmacking. <laughs> yeah. We, I, I couldn't believe all that gambling, I mean, we've got nothing like that in England, at all. I mean, well, you can gamble in England, it's called eating in restaurants. <laughs> oh, you mean? <laughs> You order a rare steak and it comes out like a charcoal briquette. You know? <laughs> the hotel I'm staying at here can't get used to me sending the steak back because there's some flavour left in it. <laughs> oh. But that Caesars was something else. I mean, those, it's like, it's decadent, isn't it? I think mean, it's like, you can't resist those machines. You've got to put money in, haven't you? Like, I've got to put money in, I've got to go. Like, you could be a Mormon, right? But, I mean, after two days, you'd be sticking money in, wouldn't you? Like, and it's, uh, it's, it's fascinating to watch people there, but particularly the English, because, like, I mean, you know, the upper class go there. Oh, hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> you can always tell the husbands, because they're trying to grow a chin. Hello, hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> the demure English lady, oh no, I'm not going to gamble, oh no, not me, oh no, no, no. <laughs> well, maybe I'll just try a little quarter. <laughs> That's the trouble, once you start, you're hooked, aren't you? I mean, like, you just become like everybody else. And there's this one English woman, she went, oh no, well, well, just one. <laughs> I went back three hours later and she got four cigarettes on the go going, Does this shit machine ever pay out? <laughs> hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it! Damn it! Mm. Oh. Hello? Mm. Come on, come on. See, fella, could you give me a hand with this? You what? Could, could you give me a hand with this? 
Oh, yeah. What? Wow! No way! Hey, hey, hey fella, 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 we're talking five bucks here, five American greenbacks. Okay. Atta boy, atta boy. Uh, turn right here to the right. Uh, there we go. Uh, uh, don't strain yourself there. If you could get me a broom, I could sweep the carpet at the same time. Yes, sir. You can move it to the right if you don't mind. Thank you very much. I don't believe it. Look at the state of this room. It's immaculate. Come on, guys. I got the press coming here in a half an hour. We got a room to smash up here. What's this? Cigarettes in the ashtray? This is disgusting! Come on, guys, think of your image. And they call themselves a rock band? Oh, Gus, Gus, oh, yeah. Gus, I got this especially for you. <laughs> it's no use, Lee. Look at the room you've got us. Try and destroy this place, you'd, you'd end up decorating it. Well, someone do something, for Christ's sake. You, you, what about you? You, you help us out. Uh, what do you like at ripping up mattresses? Oh, well, wrecking hotel rooms is not exactly a strength of mine, but I once, I once defaced a Gideon Bible. Sid Vicious lives. Next, they'll be spitting at the television. Oh, I can do that. That's easy. <laughs> if that's the press, we're in mega trouble. They're so enthusiastic, aren't they? Uh, I mean, we're once English. Foot in the door, that's it. Yeah, no yeah. Chance, yeah. We were English once. Room service, you order over tin. That's for us. Yeah, in here. You remember the Twinkie? Oval tin? You guys ordered oval tin? Yeah, I'll take this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do as much damage to the bathroom as you can, comprende? Yes, sir. Hey, guys, you're a rock band, just like the good old days. A lot of mashing. <sighs> Me and Keith Moon, just like this. Hey, I know a place where I can get some nitroglycerin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell me about it later. Right now, get into the bathroom. Starts ring, 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 ring. I thought, well, it must be something important, you know. Maybe it's on fire. I don't know. So I've got to let the bath go to bath. Hello. Lee. What's wrong with you? Pour this on everything that's cheap to replace. Yeah, you're next, Lee. to watch TV again, Mr. Carrot? Where else have I been? I've, uh, I've been to San Francisco. Yeah. Thank you. And, uh, it's an interesting city, isn't it? <laughs> it makes a change in LA to walk around without carrying your own toilet seat. I tell people from San Francisco that the toe of the shoe is worn out from lifting the toilet seat. So I'm pressing the toilet flush handle. You know. The thing is, like San Francisco, it has a, it has this terrible reputation, really worldwide, isn't it? I mean, I was, I was back home, you know, and uh, people were saying, "Are you going to America?" I said, "Yeah." They said, "Where are you going?" I said, uh, "San Francisco," and the reactions are always the same. <laughs> I thought you were straight. <laughs> Everybody's got some smart ass remark, haven't they? Hey, hey, San Francisco, hey, if you drop your money, don't bend over. 
All very subtle, you know. And, uh, in fact, when I arrived in San Francisco for the first time, I was greatly relieved to find it wasn't compulsory. <laughs> I came in February. This is a true story. I, I rented this car from a company called rent a -Rec. <laughs> Oh, yes, you know about it, don't you? Don't tell us, do you? Eh? The mug jobs, right? I, I thought it was just a catchy title, you know, and hip toddler. I'll, I'll use them. Not realising that's what you actually rent. Yeah, I rented a Corvette Stingray. Three-wheeler. <laughs> Cellophane in the windows, you know. And they tried to get me to rent a Pinto at $17 a week. I said, what's the catch? They said, the fireproof suit is $400 a week. <laughs> oh, I know, well, it's funny now, yeah. And I got this, I, I genuinely had this, this, this Corvette Stingray. And like, in Britain, that's a, that's a real dream car. I mean, you, you dream about owning a Corvette Stingray. It's a rich man's vehicle, that. And I've got one. <laughs> and, and they really want to go, don't they? <laughs> I haven't even turned it on. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, and I thought I'll give it a try, right? And, um, and also, oh, I don't, I don't know whether you find this funny. This, this, was, this is for real. This, this Corvette Stingray had a bumper sticker and it said, Honk for Jesus. <laughs> now, honk in England means throw up. <laughs> throw up for Jesus. <laughs> Jesus too! Blah. Unbelievable. And then I saw a honk if you're horny. <laughs> I thought, leave me out of this, you know, leave me out of this. No, no. I don't want to know, you know. And, uh, and people say to you, oh, well, call round and pick us up tonight. And uh, when you get there, don't ring the bell, just honk. <laughs> hey, you pick up four mates and you're knackered, aren't you? <laughs> And then, oh, there's, there's, there's lots of things like that. You go, oh, you get caught out every minute of the day. The, the classic, the classic. I was in this, again, true story, in San Francisco. And you know, you know in this country you have erasers. You know, erasers. <laughs> <laughs> You're way ahead, aren't you? You're way ahead. In England, in England, we call erasers rubbers. <laughs> I, now, I was unaware of the euphemism of what rubbers are here, you see. I mean, I didn't know, did I? So, I walked into an office supply shop. I didn't know. I walked, I went, uh, good morning, uh, could I have a rubber, please? Are you one of those dickheads? I just want a rubbish to try the drugstore. <laughs> so I trolled on down to the drugstore and I walked in. There was a woman behind the counter, right? There's always a woman in these situations. I walked up and said, oh, good morning. Could I have a rubber, please? <laughs> you just want one? <laughs> I said, yeah, I don't make that many mistakes. <laughs> I said, have you got one with a Mickey Mouse on the tip? So I can... <laughs> she called the police. <laughs> isn't it weird, isn't it weird? Anyway, I was, I was driving this, this Corvette Stingray, you see. And I thought, well, I'll, you know, I want to try it out. So I, thought, I, I took it onto Ventura Highway. And, uh, and, of course, the trouble is, in this country, you've got this wretched 55-mile-an-hour speed limit, haven't you? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I've got a Corvette Stingray. You can't get it out of first gear at 55 mile an hour, can you? So I was, I was tootling along, and I thought, oh, I'm only here for a while. If I get stopped by the police, I won't have to pay for the ticket. So I thought, right, boot it down. <laughs> Four or five G-force on me face. <laughs> The cellophane's flapping in the windows. <laughs> and I'm, because I'm, I'm cutting up all the traffic because I'm driving the wrong way up the road. <laughs> Every 
everybody's going, Bibi, what the hell are you doing? What the hell are you doing? Hey, English, pal, English. <laughs> well, I ought to explain that, actually. Um, <laughs> that, that is an English expression, and um, y your equivalent is that. Okay? Yeah, I didn't know about that either un until the police stopped me. I, well, I've got, well, I mean, like, uh, I was doing about 120 miles an hour for about 10 minutes, you know, and I, I finally got him to the right side of the road, and, uh, and I saw him in the rear view mirror, you know, whoop, 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 and of course, I, I mean, I'm, I'm used to the, to the British police and, uh, and uh, well, I mean, uh, well, I, I don't know whether you, but if you see a policeman in England with three stripes on his arm, it means he can read and write. <laughs> if he's got two stripes, it means he can either read or write. And if he's got one stripe, it means he knows someone who can read or write. I mean, and when the police get you on the hook in this country, don't they play around with it, eh? Hey, we've got him. We, OK, reel him in, reel him in. Hey, OK, let him out, let him out, let him out, let him out. Bring him in, bring him in, bring him in. They just drove by the side of me for about two or three miles. You know, a couple of cops in the car, the one guy on the sill just looking at me, you know. <laughs> hey! Mario Andretti! Pull over! Keep your hands where we can see them! <laughs> so I pulled over onto that hard shoulder bit you have here, you know, with all the potholes and the dead cats and things. <laughs> because the trouble is, in England, the police always pull up in front of you, right? And, and as you know, the police in this country always pull up behind you, see? So I'm sort of like, you know, crawling along and I'm waiting for them to overtake me <laughs> to stop and get out, you see? And they're following me behind, waiting for me to stop so they can get out and talk to me. Like, see, we're about 10 miles, we're bubbling up and down. <laughs> So eventually they get fed up and they drive up by the side of me again. What the hell are you doing? Pull over, you dickhead! <laughs> and I made a mental note to find out what dickhead meant, you know? <laughs> so I pulled up, I wound the cellophane down, <laughs> and the next thing I know, I've got a six gun in the ear. Wunk! Okay, get out! Oh! That scares the earlobes off you. That, I've never had a six gun in the ear before. I've had a few other things, but I've never had a I thought, please don't pull the trigger. I've just had my hair cut. Blow, blow, blow. Get out! OK, OK, OK. So I lifted the door off. You know. I sternly said, what the hell do you think you're doing? And I thought, well, I'd better say the right thing. So I said, um, about 120 miles an hour. Oh, a comedian, eh? I said, yes, how did you know? <laughs> how long have you been here? I said, oh, just a day. <laughs> have a good one. So, tell me a little about this. what's been going on, huh? You know how I've been having back trouble already? Sure, sure. Guess what? I get rear ended yesterday. No. I'm back with the chiropractor. Excuse me one second. Coffee? That, that's fine. Thank you. Special today is meatloaf. The soup is chicken. Um. I'll just have a hot dog. Hot dog? Yeah. Hmm? Oh, and could you hold the bun? Hold the bun. 
He should have something else. Listen, doll, you should have something more than a hot dog. I mean, he really doesn't eat enough. He should have maybe a, a donut. You know, that has more vitamins. No, Hilda, not a donut. He should have a piece of fruit for dessert. Oh, that. Look at him, he's a stranger. Yeah. Do you want a donut? Um, yes. Yes, I'll have a donut. Thank Good. You. Good. Good. It's much better. Something I always wanted to know, maybe you could tell me. How do they get that laugh track stuff on there? Do they take it from an old TV show or something? It's, it's not put on after, it's, it's a, a live audience. Uh, oh. The laughter's real. Watch. I've had this in a pan of boiling water for about an hour. It's just the right temperature now. See? Can't you tell the difference? To me, laughing is laughing. Could I just hear right? Did you just tell a joke about beer being warm? Is that what you're saying, doll? No, no. The joke is about beer being cold. I See? don't care. But don't you say when it, you're hot and thirsty, you want a cold drink. It's just plain science. Yes, but look, science doesn't come into this. In England, in pubs, we serve our beer warm. Ugh. Ugh. No, it's not the joke, it's the way you deliver it. You should do it more like this. You've got to emphasize the word hot more. I put it into a pot of hot water. <laughs> <laughs> See, then you get your laugh. Yeah, but it's not pot or hot. It's pan and boiling. <laughs> what are you saying? The line is, I put it into a pan of no, boiling no, no. water. Hot works better. It rhymes with hot. That way you can emphasize it. It doesn't matter. You'll get your laugh. I got the laugh, and anyway, it's not the joke, as I was telling these two ladies. Now, wait a minute, no, it's not a... No, I think Randy's right about the hot business. And it rhymes with pot, you gotta admit that. What does he know about it? I wrote gags for President Gerald Ford, pal. <laughs> <laughs> now that's comedy. <laughs> well... That's not funny. Uh, it, it, didn't we see that part before? The customer is always right. Except when he's wrong. I haven't finished my food yet. I can watch what I want until I've finished my food. That's fair. That's true. <laughs> Okay, that's it. Oh. Pay on the way out. Right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, and have a nice day, asshole. Oh, I'm can you put the channel back on here? I want, I want to put the, put the channel back on here. I want to watch it. It's funny. I wonder who the hell that guy was. I've got to tell you this. This I'm, I'm just uh, about six weeks ago. I just I just come back from Hong Kong, which is like that was an ambition of mine to go there. You know. And um, you're probably aware of Chinatown here, and particularly in San Francisco. It's nothing compared to Hong Kong, believe me. <laughs> I have never seen so many people in one place in all of my life. I mean, it's, it's like an island the size of Alcatraz. There's like eight million Chinese on it. Something like that. And uh, if, you can, if you can imagine, like, Times Square, New Year's Eve, that's Hong Kong, 3 a.m. Sunday morning. <laughs> millions of people, millions of people. And like, and like there's, there's, there's no sort of politeness uh, uh, or courtesy in Hong Kong because it's just knocked out of you when you live there. I mean, like, I, the first morning you go shopping, you, sort of, you just walk along the street, you just bump into people, you can't do anything. Just boop, boop, beg your pardon, sorry. Boop, boop, boop. Ever so sorry, I just think, I, I beg your pardon. Did I, turn, I, I think you tried, I, did I try, I beg, I'm, 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 a couple of hours of that, you think, oh, stuff this. You know, like, an, you buy an umbrella, right, <laughs> sharpen the end, here I come out, the bloody road. Um, give it. I was, I was driven from the airport to the hotel in a taxi, right? 
And I got into the back of the taxi and I just sort of sat there. I didn't know. And he started on and boom, and he started a fair lick, you know, boom, and I thought, blimey, he's going a bit too. <laughs> this won't take long, you know, everything's a blur. Boom, boom. And I said, he's leaving this red light a bit late, eh? <laughs> he's going to have to stop. <laughs> he went through a red light. And he went through another one. I thought, <gasps> and you know when you want to say something, but you can't because it gets stuck there with abject terror. I thought, He's totally aggressive, isn't it? I mean, there's no sympathy in it at all, you know, like, no matter what the situation is called, which means I'm ever so sorry I've run over your grandmother in my truck. <laughs> One of the things is I'm, I'm really into uh, Chinese food. I'm a great fan of Chinese food, particularly Cantonese food, you know, ethnic Chinese. And when I was there, I, was, I asked the promoter, you see, I said, is there any chance of having an ethnic Chinese meal? in an ethnic Chinese restaurant. He said, yes, yeah, no problem, no problem, sort that out. He said, well, go tonight, go tonight. He said, I'll call around your hotel and pick you up about eight o'clock. And uh, there, was, there was four of us in the car. And there was myself, there was the, the promoter, there was my manager, and there was a, there was a bloke called Joe Dolce. <laughs> You've heard of him, obviously. <laughs> You, you'll know who he is. As soon as I tell you who he is, you'll know him. It, it, there was a hit single here and in, and in Britain, in fact, quite worldwide almost, about four years ago. Uh, and Joe Dolce uh, made it. It was that one that went, uh, What's the matter, you? Yeah, God, and all is better. <laughs> right. Bloody awful, wasn't it? And, and, and Joe Dolce is doing the concert with me, and he's in the car. So, and he's from Australia, and he's, he's into the ecology in a big way. You know, he's into all that unpolished brown rice and knitting his own muesli and all that business. You know, <laughs> and, uh, he's, in, he's into saving the ant as well. Like, and uh, apparently the ant is doomed. You know, save the ant, man. Yeah, yeah, okay, Joe, shut up. So, we get down to an area, an area. I forget the name of it, in Hong Kong, where we're going to have this meal, and I, I know nothing about it. We arrive in. Uh, we, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a fairly rough area, but I mean, it's very friendly. And uh, we are the only Europeans for about two or three square miles. Right? And what I'm going to tell you now is a perfectly true story. I do not exaggerate in any way. In fact, I underplay it, if anything. Stop the car. It's in a one-way street with a blocked off at the end, you see. Get out the car. I said, uh, right, where's the restaurant? The guy with us said, uh, here it is. And I looked, and this restaurant was in the gutter. There was a restaurant in the gutter. And I went, uh -huh. He went, yeah, it's ethnic. Oh, good, good. And like, and I, I, I do not lie, all up the street, there's hundreds of baskets of live chickens and ducks. And there's great big rats, like rabbits, scudding everywhere. You know, like a, I could feel the plague coming out. I don't know, is this? He said, yeah, it's ethnic. I don't know. And of course, Joe is ecstatic. Hey, it's ethnic restaurant. Hey, save the ant. Yeah, okay. We're standing there, and the, the owner of the Chinese restaurant comes over, you see. And the guy we were with, this promoter, speaks Chinese. He, well, in fact, he knows one word of Chinese, which is wiki. And it gets him everywhere. He's brilliant with it. He just went, oh, wiki, 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 wiki. Oh, da, da, wiki, ah, wiki, wiki, wiki. Wiki, 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 oh, da, wiki, ah, wiki, wiki, wiki. Wiki, 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 oh, da, 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 wiki, ah, wiki, wiki, wiki. Wiki, 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 this is Jasper Callot, his manager. This is Joe Dolce. Oh, Joe Dolce, oh, what the matter, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a hit everywhere. And uh, anyway, this bloke's really proud of his restaurant, so he takes us over and introduces us to the two chefs. They're cooking on a propane gas stove, you know, big woks and like, and they're sweating like lawn sprinklers. It's going everywhere, you know. And he shows us the food, he shows us all this food. And this food is just literally 20 trays of meat, right, in the road. Like, and I thought it was a road accident. I mean, I didn't, tell... <laughs> I didn't recognize any of it, you know. And uh, so he sits us down, you know, and then he comes back for the order. Oh, no, wicky, wicky, wicky. 
<laughs> oh, well, and, and uh, obviously I was feeling really adventuresome by this time, you see, so I said, um, I'll just have some boiled cabbage, please. And, oh, oh, boy, oh, oh. And, uh, and the bloke with me said, come on, be a bit more adventuresome. So I said, OK. I said, uh, well, I have some chicken. Oh, 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 oh. And, and I said, uh, have you got any fish? And, oh, wiki. Oh, yeah, oh, wiki, ready, yeah. He goes, oh. And he takes me, he pulls me by the hand, and he leads me to this big tank of fish. And they're all swimming round there, you know, like, and he goes, oh, wiki, wiki. And I've got to choose a fish. I thought, oh, no, I don't want to choose a bloody fish. Oh, no. oh. And, like, these fish knew what was going to happen because they'd seen it, you know, before, and they were in there, you know. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> don't choose me. I've only been here a week, you know. He goes, oh, wiki, wiki. Anyway, it was this fish that looked like Benny Hill, so I said, I'll have him. <laughs> Wiki gets this big net and he starts chasing Benny round the tank, you know, like, and, and of course the rest of the fish are safe, so they're watching with interest, you know. <laughs> Three to one on Benny, okay, here we go. And he finally catches Benny in the net and he flicks him out into the air and Benny lands in the gutter. And as soon as he lands in the gutter, this Chinese bloke comes out with a big mallet and goes, whoa, 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 on Benny's head. He sticks him with two skewers and he's into the fire. Whoa! I'm sorry, Benny, I didn't know they were going to do that. And I felt really guilty, you know, like in the... And I sat there and I ate the boiled cabbage and, and then they brought Benny, you know, and I couldn't look him in the eye, you know, like and the other one had fallen out. And like, and then, they, then they brought the chicken, you know, and three of us had ordered chicken, we were eating this, it looks like chicken and it tastes like chicken. Joe's ordered battered wiki. Right, and he's enthusing about this ethnic restaurant, takes a big bite, oh, 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 oh it's an ant! Wiki was an ant. Ooh, it's an ant! You've killed an ant! What's the matter, you? You've got no respect! And they all joined in the chorus. What the matter, you? There was chaos going on. Like, and out of the corner of my eye, I saw this one Chinese guy reach into this big basket of live chickens, and he pulls his chicken out and goes, bleh, bleh, and kills the chicken, throws it to the one side, gets another one. Like, and I'm going, oh no! No more. And like three of us eating chicken watching them, and when one starts, everybody starts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The table was a right mess, you know. You, you couldn't tell what you're eating or what you're gonna eat. It was that's like And without a word of a lie, he gets this one chicken and he goes mm -hmm. and throws it, but he hasn't killed the chicken. It's just ripped the chicken's neck. Mm -hmm. This chicken can't believe it's gonna reprieve. It's off down the road, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> the Chinese go bananas. They're picking up knives and mallets and that. And the chicken runs down the road through the traffic, turns around, comes all the way back up the road, straight under our table. Get it out of here! They surround the table and to entice the chicken out, they start throwing corn to it, as if the chicken could eat corn with a ripped neck. And, uh, it had a bloody good go, though. Uh, uh, and the rats came out and gobbled up all the corn on there. Uh, uh, there's nothing left. Uh, I'm into the Ruth stage. Ruth, Ruth, Herbie, Herbie. There's nothing left except the boiled cabbage. Here comes the boiled cabbage. <laughs> So don't eat in restaurants when you're in Hong Kong. We have been invaded in Britain by your fast food chains. You know, your instant food. We've, we've got them all now. We've got, I mean, Kentucky Fried Chicken and Taco Bell, Wendy Burgers. McDon I mean, McDonald's are everywhere, eh? Those wretched golden arches, I mean, like, I mean, you could have warned us about McDonald's, couldn't you? I mean, like, you know, give us some sort of hint, you know what I mean? And, I mean, McDonald's was a cultural shock to the British. This is the face of Satan. Amen. Amen. This man and others of his ilk Pollute our American airwaves. Mock our American way of life. Pervert our American way of language. See how the devil has stamped his mark on the hideous face 
of this angel of darkness. Excuse me. I think there's some mistake here. I don't suppose there's any chance of having the sound back on, is there? Oh. Yes! Yes! Oh. Well, I'm not yes. fussed, really. I mean, this is the work I mean, the Lord. Lord. This is the Lord's work. Bring that sinner on up here to Reverend Queen. Oh, baby Jesus. No. Baby Jesus has delivered Jasper unto me that I may drive out the demon that possesses his tongue. No! You speak not with your own tongue. You speak with the tongue of a demon. You speak with the tongue of a demon of Englishness. Bloody hell. I hear you, demon. I hear your ugly, distorted voice coming from deep within this fortress of flesh. We all speak like this in Birmingham. I will not let go. No! I will not let go of this poor sinner's head until you come out. Oh. Mm -hmm. Say, baby. <laughs> baby. Uh, baby. Say, Jesus. Uh, Jesus. Oh, the demon mm. of Englishness shall not bind you. Ha <laughs> ha! Ah, the demon of Englishness shall not hold you. Ah! Baby Jesus. 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 Heal! 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 Oh. In the name of Jesus. Kentucky Fried Chicken! <laughs> Jasper, I know that at this moment in time, you wish to give the Reverend a love offering. A love offering. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Of not less than 50 American dollars. Hallelujah! Oklahoma! Jasper, I know that uh, if the Lord were to move you to offer a hundred dollars, that I would say hallelujah to that. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. You know, Jasper, that the Reverend's ministry offers extremely reasonable rates of exchange on the British uh, pound sterling. Hallelujah! Yeah. We're going to give you a little permanent reminder of this, your day of salvation. Something that will be with you always. Sister Chastity, I want you to present Brother Jasper with a Reverend Quinn traveling companion. Oh, it's okay. 
It's all right. Well, I've got this fellow with me. I'm okay. Oh, um, wait. Mm -hmm. I know your face. Do I look familiar to you? No. Wait a minute. I've seen you on TV, haven't I? Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah? I'm that, uh, I'm that British TV comedian. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, my God! I don't believe it! I can't believe I'm really face to face with Benny Hill. <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm an actress. Benny uh, Hill. <laughs> yeah, uh, what do you say, uh, uh, let's do lunch. Uh, we'll, Benny we'll, we'll do sushi. Um, uh, forget it. Uh, why don't we go back to my place and we'll have a bite there. What do you say? Do you have a TV? Yeah, sure. Benny Hill, huh? Okay. Let's go. Terrific. Okay. That was a close thing, you know. I know. It scared the daylights out of me. He's okay. He's looking after me. He's a good luck symbol. <laughs> You're funny. Come on in. Thank you. I'm so glad you could come over. Oh, so am I. Where would you like the groceries? Oh, uh, right here is fine. Okay, that'd be heavy. Ah. He's sort of heavy, too. Oh, I'll take him off you. Okay. Here you go. Ah. <laughs> he is sort of cute, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> isn't he just? I've grown quite fond of him, you know. Really? I was thinking, if only his lips moved, we could do a ventriloquist act, you know? He could, he could read the Sermon on the Mount while I was drinking a bottle of beer. <laughs> You're funny. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to put him by the window, OK? It's a lovely view. Yes, he can see the church from here. Oh, this is great. Is that the television? Uh, yeah, that's the TV. Hi, this is Larry, the latex man. Can you call me back on 545-3413? Your photos are all over the wall. Well, that's because I'm an actress. Oh, you're, you're an actress? Yes. What sort of actress are you? Well, I... Busy, I, or...? I, I, I'm a dial -a dream girl. Uh, I do telephone encounter therapy. Yes, that's what I do. Huh. Uh, it's, it's, it's kind of like acting. I mean, well, it's not acting, but it really is acting. Uh, would you like something to eat? Uh, scrambled eggs? Great. Anything but... Dill pickle. <laughs> Dill pickle, you're funny. <laughs> Hi, Larry. This is Dial a Dream Girl. Yes, can I have your credit card number, please? Six, eight, seven, eight. Great. I want to sit on your face, Larry. I want to sit on your face till you guess my weight. Can you feel my legs, Larry? Can you feel my legs wrap around your neck? Do you like raspberry jam, Larry? You know why? I've got lots and lots of raspberry jam. And do you know where I want to spread it? <laughs> Smart boy, <laughs> yes. Larry, do you know what I'm wearing? I'm wearing my rubber nurse's uniform. Yes, that's right. And do you know what? No, you bad boy, I'm not wearing one of those. <laughs> Could you get me the pepper, please? Oh, shoot. Sure. Oh, Larry. Oh, Larry, you know you're the only man I love. Oh, yes. Oh, Larry. I could never live without you. I live to love you. Larry, make me hot. Tell me everything you'll do to me. 
Never mind. I'll find it. I know there's some pepper around here. It's got to be. I just bought it. I want to share with you. You do it to me. Oh, Larry. Oh, the things you do to me. Yeah. Oh, Larry, I love it when you talk to me that way. Go for it, Larry. Now, go for it. Oh, yes, yeah, do yeah, it. Do it. I'm with you, Larry. I'm with you. I'm with you. Go for Nirvana. Yes. Oh. Okay, Larry. Thanks for calling. What do you think? Was that good? Terrific. Yeah? I have a strange craving for a cigarette. No. Come on. What do you think? Was I really good? Um, hey, what, what if, what if, uh, I, I got you my picture and resume, you know, in case sometime you'd want to use me in one of your shows. Oh, that's great. I'll, I'll get it right away. Ellie? Yeah? Could I use your television, please? Sure, Benny. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you again. I only went off for a piss. <laughs> well, you can't sit here drinking this all night without wandering off, you know. Mm. It's only just there as well, so. <laughs> well, it isn't, but they'll find that out in the morning. <laughs> oh. One thing I do love here is, uh, is I, I love television. Here. I, am, I am a TV freak. And I watch television all the time, and, and here is just wonderful. I mean, like, I've got 30 channels to choose from here. <laughs> we get four at home. Right? And they close down about 11 o'clock. I mean, it's just ridiculous. I just, I, just, I just watch television the whole time. That's all I do, just change channels. <laughs> I just fall asleep watching. <laughs> Wake up next morning. <laughs> and then when I'm gone, lots of things that throw you, like, in the... I can't get used to the commercials here. It's like, you just throw them in anywhere, eh, don't you? They just come at any time. You haven't, got, you haven't got a clue what you're watching half the time, have you? I mean, in England, it's fairly straightforward, because they say, end of part one, then you get your commercials, and it's part two. At least you know where you are here. Like, you haven't got a faintest idea. You're, you're watching some John Wayne movie, you know? Like, and he's got the girl in his arms, he's going, uh, Catherine, there's something I've got to ask you. What's that, John? Do you suffer from painful hemorrhoids? <laughs> It's all hemorrhoid creams and, and laxative pills and I, I saw I saw Leonard Nimoy advertising laxative pills. Mr. Spock? <laughs> A constipated Vulcan. I, I couldn't get out. <laughs> we love McEnroe. Oh, I mean what an ambassador he is for your country. <laughs> Every, every time he comes to Wimbledon, we learn at least three or four new words. 
It's wonderful. You can see the Wimbledon umpires walking around going, Oh, hello, motherfucker. Oh. <laughs> ah, I did. Oh. While I've been here, I've, I've been listening to some Steve Martin albums. And, oh, I think, oh, no, come on, he is a wonderful comic. I have been roaring my socks off with him. And, uh, yeah, he's, I was, I'll tell you what I was really got to me was, um, for years, for years, I've been looking for a reply for a certain situation, and, um, and I got it off a of Steve Martin album. It's the in-between course smoking. So, and it's an, and they are a pain because like they always smoke in between courses. I mean they can't wait till the end of the meal. They go like <laughs> Do you mind if I smoke in between courses? And I've always wanted to reply. And Steve Martin's got the perfect answer. He says, No, do you mind if I fart? <laughs> Oh, thank you, Steve. Thank you. You know, it's, isn't it wonderful? He goes on to say, like, uh, it's just a habit of his, you know, and uh, he tried to give it up once, but he gained weight. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and the killer, which was, um, which is, uh, there's nothing like lighting one up at the end of a meal. <laughs> <laughs> are you into that here at all? Are you, are, are, are you into lighting up farts? Are you, isn't, isn't that an amazing statement when you first hear it? You can't believe your ears, can you? You think, wow. I was, I was at a party, you know, just having a couple of drinks, and, uh, and this mate of mine said, to, hey, just, just, there's Harry, there's Harry. He sets light to his farts. <laughs> oh, come on. He does, I've seen him do it, I've seen him do it, I've seen him, I've seen him. And there's about six of us going, don't be ridiculous, you can't do that. He can't, I've seen him, I've seen him, I've seen him. And he went and got this Harry. And this Harry was really indignant, of course, we'd questioned his ability. Oh, no message, straight down with his trousers, out with the matches and broke. I went, good God. That really impressed me, I tell you what. I, I was eating beans for about a week, I thought, that's for me. It's not as easy as it looks either, is it? I mean, you've got to get your timing right, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and it's dangerous as well, you know. <laughs> We went to another party about two weeks later and this Harry was there, you know, and he was showing off a bit. He was bragging, you know, he was trying to impress these couple of birds. And, <laughs> and he got carried away and, 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 well, he had a blowback. <laughs> and he was a big airy bugger as well. <laughs> we were really concerned. <laughs> oh, stop it, Harry, stop it, I can't get it. And he was in real pain and agony. We had to get him to hospital, you know, and he couldn't sit down or anything. And this mate of ours had a station wagon, so we bundled Harry into the back of the station wagon and stuck his bum out the window, you know. And four of us piled inside in this station wagon, heading off towards hospital, four blokes inside in hysterics, and a big singed bum stuck out the window. <laughs> People's faces were amazing. <laughs> Look at that, Agnes. Good heavens, yes. <laughs> he must have set light to a fart. <laughs> OK, OK. So I've told you what to do now, OK? I told you what to do. What I want you to do, what I, do me a favour. Do me, go home and practice that. <laughs> Just, and when I come back to LA, OK, come back here for the next time, right? And because I've got an ambition. I've always wanted an end to one of my concerts like Barry Manilow has. <laughs> You know, you know, at the end of a Barry Manilow concert where they all stand up and they strike a match and they wave it at Barry, huh? Huh? Well, we'll go one better than that, OK? <laughs> we'll blow the bloody roof off this place. See you next time. Thank you, Olay. Good night.